Today I have Kimmy here with me from the Fit Mummy Project. Hi, Kimmy. Hello. <laughs> I feel like we do this intro all the time, yeah. but <laughs> we have been chatting through a number of different things around postnatal uh, recovery, I guess you might call it. And something that I would love to talk through is around the pelvic floor, mm. because I'm three babies down and I know you are too. Mm -hmm. And this is something you take for granted, I think, in the early days. Mm. And I feel like if I wish I could wind back the clock and probably be a little bit more mindful mm. of the exercises I should have been doing so I would love to know a little bit more about your approach when it comes to caring for your pelvic floor yeah you and me both um <laughs> so the pelvic floor is often out of sight out of mind especially pre-pregnancy um and I myself didn't care about my pelvic floor um even all through my first pregnancy but the pelvic floor really is the foundation of the core so mm. it's a hammock of muscles that sits um, in the base of your pelvis. So it connects the pubic bone at the front, the tailbone at the back, and the sit bones at the sides. And it works to support the organs of the pelvis. So um, bladder, um, bowel, and uterus. It also helps to manage continence. So continence and incontinence. Um, it provides um, pleasure during sex or helps to increase pleasure during sex. And it also can respond to um, increases in intra-abdominal pressure. So things like coughing or sneezing, mm -hmm. your pelvic floor comes on, manages to support all of those internal organs. So it's so important. Um, and during pregnancy, the load on the pelvic floor increases. It also Ooh. has to stretch um, to allow for the birth of the baby if you have a like, vaginal birth. Mm -hmm. um, but even if you have a cesarean birth, your the pelvic floor is under a lot of pressure mm. just for the nine months of carrying all that extra weight. Yeah. So it needs to be able to contract and also to stretch um, and then to recover mm. really well. So the the main thing with pelvic floor is that I think one in two women don't do their pelvic floor exercises correctly. Which is crazy when you think about just how important it is. It is, but it's you can't see it. Um, so it's really hard to cue someone. So one of the things I always recommend is to go and see a women's health physio. And if you're watching this and you're still pregnant, go now. But if you're not, um, as soon as you stop bleeding after birth, yes. um, so around that six to eight weeks mark, it's a really good time to go and see the pelvic uh, women's health physio mm. and they will help you to find that good contraction and engagement for pelvic floor mm. and also assess for any injuries that may have happened during birth. It's something that I wish I knew about definitely mm. because you know i think you just take it for granted that oh well my body's changed i've had you know three vaginal births this is just the way it's going to be but that's not the case thankfully there are some amazing um health professionals out there that can support you um and products i know for leakage as well mm. um but yeah i think you know like you say out of sight out of mind so are there any little tips that you can do to remind yourself like is there any little quirky habits or things that oh, i've heard of yes. traffic signals and things before yes um yeah i so I have a prolapse and I've also suffered from incontinence and just on incontinence, leaking is really common, but it's not normal. Okay. So whilst a lot of women might talk about leaking and it's a bit of a joke and I make jokes about it all the time, but it's not normal. So if you are leaking in day-to-day -day life or while doing exercise, then definitely get yourself to a women's health physio. Mm. Um, but just with the pelvic floor, um, research shows that that if you can do it every day, it, it really is beneficial in helping support prolapse, reducing incontinence and recovery. So just finding that five minutes of day that works for you. Some women, it's while they're breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Other women, it is while they're sitting in traffic lights. Mm -hmm. Some, it's just before bed. Um, so just finding that five minutes, I set alarms on okay. my phone. Good. No, well, we <laughs> and do for everything else. Up, it's like pelvic floor. So, yeah. But, That's great. Um, yeah, so just whatever works for you, but just try and get it done. And yeah. and if you do suffer any heaviness, dragging sensations, pain or discomfort during intercourse, then they're all little warning signs. So don't ignore them. Listen to your body and go and see a women's health physio. Yeah, great advice. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> I'm going to be setting those alarms, that's for sure. I do for everything else. Just so put it a makes code sense. name. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want the whole office saying, oh, and he's public floor exercise time. <laughs> time <yeah. laughs> Thanks so much, Kim. No Mary. worries. And thank we, you. We hope you found that useful, guys. Um, so get out there and start lifting, lifting. squeezing. <laughs> <laughs>